Matthew chapter, uh, I almost said 24, Matthew chapter 12, <laughs> some of you caught me, Matthew chapter 12. Let's talk about haunted houses, shall we? Let's talk about haunted houses, Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12. What does, it, what does the Bible have to say about spirits in certain homes, residential places? Is that really true? I do believe actually that that can happen. But it's not referring to the deceased of loved ones. I believe those are demonic spirits. Those are demonic spirits. And I do believe that they can inhabit certain residential locations and houses. So I believe that is very possible even today. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to look at verse 44. Matthew chapter 12. We will read verse 43 and then to 44. Verse 43, and then we'll continue onwards. So concerning haunted houses, here's something interesting concerning demons. Demons, what they will turn to, demonic spirits, they like places that are wet. That's what you're going to notice throughout the Bible. They like places that are considered to be wet. So that's why you're going to see strange stuff going on in certain wet locations. One easy example is the Bermuda Triangle, for example. A lot of crazy things and missing ships. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 12, and we will read verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. So notice he's going through dry places, but look at this. Seeking rest and findeth none. So there's nothing he could find. Why? Because in dry places, he can't find anything. So he's going to go to someplace else. Look at verse 44. Then he saith, I will return into my what? House from which I came out. Now this house that the Bible is referring to, so there is a haunted house. But in this verse, it's referring to a person's body. And when he is come, he findeth it, notice, empty, swept, and garnished. Notice that demonic spirits, they go to wet places, also empty houses. Now in this case, it's going to be referring to the body. But whether body or building, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that there are demonic spirits in certain locations and they haunt them. In this body, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. The more that it's empty, the more that quote-unquote house is empty, the more room you uh, create for demon possession, more spirits, more demons to inhabit. We're going to keep reading right here. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man, of that man is worse than the first. So notice right here that this man, he was demon-possessed with seven more spirits. This spirit originally, originally left the house of the man, or the body of the man, and he was going through dry places, but he found nothing. So he wanted to return to the body. Why? Because demonic spirits are more attracted to something wet. Inside the body, that's where your, all the, the humidity and wetness can be. Whereas outside it is all going to be dry. That's why demonic spirits have some kind of weird infatuation with something wet. But when it's empty, garnished, the more room you open up for more de demonic spirits. That's why what's interesting when you go later on to urban legends and myths, it's not uh, houses that are uh, filled with people that's haunted. It's empty kind of houses where it creates more room for more kind of spirits. We're going to look at the book of Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Demonic spirits have an infatuation with something wet. That's why they will, they will like to possess human bodies because inside that's where all the humidity, where all the wetness lies. We're going to look at the book of Mark chapter 5. And look at verse 12. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. Now, notice what happened to these devils when they entered the swine. And forthwith Jesus, Jesus gave them leave, 
and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the where. See, there were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Notice right here that in Mark chapter 5 and verse 13, that they have an infatuation with something wet. So in Mark chapter 5 verse 13, they were cast into the sea. By the way, where, what is the home of demonic spirits at the end when God judges them? The what? Lake of fire. Lake of fire. How about that? There's a reason for that. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, into hell prepared. Prepared for who? The devil and his angels. And then the Bible says right here at the book of uh, Mark chapter 5 and verse 7, they know that when the Bible says prepared for the devil and his angels, it can include demons and devils as well. Now we're going to look at several other places. We're going to look at the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, Genesis. We're going to look at the book of Genesis chapter 35. The book of Genesis, and it's not going to be chapter 35, I apologize. It's going to be chapter 28, chapter 28. Chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. Now there are cases, current cases, current cases where there are weird things going on in people's homes. For example, I had one member, so I'm going to give a true case of one of my members. There was one of my members who moved into this apartment. And then when they moved into this apartment, what happened was some crazy things happened. And one of the people committed suicide in that room. So when the brother went inside to live at that apartment, I mean, they got it at a pretty decent price, obviously, because something tragic happened in that place. But then there were a lot of weird things that he was hearing in the room, a lot of things that spooked him. So maybe it was his emotions or it could be something real. But he was really serious about it. So he talked to me about it. And when I talk to him, I'm not going to just tell him, oh, it's just something you're thinking about, dismiss it, because what, what if it's real and he needs help? So I told him that if it's real, then what you need to do is plead the blood of Jesus Christ. So that is absolutely important to do. You've got to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. But also what's really freaky about this is that we had a missionary to, uh, I think it was at the region of South Africa, he had some spooky things going on this particular house, some weird demonic spirits, movement, activity, noises, and it was really real. And he tried everything, and then you know what he had to do at the end when he was really desperate? So uh, in the end, what that person had to do was that he had to turn, when he was really desperate, so then he turned to other people who dealt with spiritism and weird stuff, and then he mentioned uh, what did they did about that. So then they mentioned about uh, doing this, doing that. And then he was desperate, so he went for it. Because that, sometimes, folks, there are spooky things that can go on in people's houses. I really believe that. I mean, if the person is that desperate and he really tried everything, and, he, and this person is a missionary, a Bible-believing missionary, so this ain't just some crazy person. This is a Bible-believing missionary, genuine person. Then you got to realize this: is that some of this stuff can be more real than you think. I believe those things can be real because we see throughout the Bible that demonic activity occur in locations, weird stuff going on at the Bermuda Triangle, also at Antarctica, right? Also at Antarctica too. Some you got some conspiracies. We don't know how much is true, but then there is some weird activity going on over there as well and at Arctica. Why? Demonic spirits are attracted to wet places. We're also going to look at Genesis 28, but this is true of God as well. This is true of God as well. There can be some good spirit inhabiting a location as well. Genesis chapter 28, and we will read verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night 
because the sun was set. And he took up the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Now notice when he lay down in this certain place, notice, and he dreamed a dream and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. This particular location where Jacob was at became a pinpoint location of a ladder that reached to heaven. So there can be some sort of spiritual presence involved in a location. Jacob saw it that way at verse 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Notice that to Jacob, he was haunted at verse 17 by this particular, quote-unquote, house again. So we see haunted houses throughout the Bible. It can be a good thing, or it can also be a bad thing. So we saw that at Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 19. The name of that place, if you're curious, is Bethel. Bethel. We're going to look at one more passage. Look at the book of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I believe that such a spirit can occur when a group of believers are together in church. I really believe that. We can have our church building, believe it or not, turn into a haunted house, so to speak, in a good way. We can turn our church building into a way where the Holy Spirit is all over that. It's just filling up all over the rooms. And I don't know if you ever experienced that, but I experienced that a few times in my life. I don't know if you experienced that before. Perhaps in our church you maybe felt the presence of the Spirit before, right? Because all spirits of newborn believers were just synced as one much more than ever before. And the preacher's spirit, when he's preaching, was so much synced in with yours. We've done prayer. We've done singing. That filled up the Spirit. And because of that such synchronization and unity and prayer and hearts and mind combined as one, the Holy Spirit had such free course about the room that you can tell God was in that place. Have you ever experienced that in our church before? Oh, to God, it should be every day. It should be every day in our lives. Especially go to a prayer meeting. You can turn that place into a really a big haunted house in a good way. You can have believers combined together in prayer and the Holy Spirit power of God can really fall upon that place. And you can have God's presence really present over there. We're going to look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. This happened with this particular church. The very first Christian church, you got to understand. Very first Christian church. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Notice that they were in this room together. But what happened to the Christian believers? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Notice the Holy Spirit truly filled up that particular house. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Notice, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Notice that to have such filling of the Spirit can truly haunt the whole house. Now, I do not believe, like Charismatics teach today, that there is some sort of visible, you can see this visible power of the Spirit in churches today. Direct visions, direct signs and wonders, direct revelation from God, directly is all gone. However, we can get somewhat close, we can get something close to that, because the Bible says Christians today can be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a demand at the book of Ephesians, actually. So because we have such filling of the Spirit, and the Spirit filling can grow even more, the Bible even says the Spirit can come out of you at the book of John. So if the filling of the Spirit can fill so much within you, that can come out of you. And if you have one Christian like that, but if you have a hundred Christians in one room doing that, you know what you do? You fill up that room with so much of the presence of God then. 
So pretty much you create a haunted house over there, but in a good way, in a good way. So Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4 shows a positive light of God's Holy Spirit. If we want a haunted house, it should be the Holy Spirit and not a demonic spirit. That's what we should have.